Hello, my name is uh, Itai and I would like to tell you about uh, my paper Cryptanalytic Applications of the Polynomial Method for Solving Multivariate Equation Systems over uh, GF2. In this work, we consider the problem of uh, solving polynomial equation systems. The input to the problem is a polynomial system denoted by E that consists of m polynomials over a finite field f, where each uh, polynomial has uh, n variables and is given by uh, its algebraic normal form, or ANF, as a sum of uh, monomials. Now the algebraic degree of each polynomial is bounded by a small constant d. The goal is to find a solution to e, meaning an assignment to all the n variables uh, that basically zeroes uh, all the monomial, all the polynomials. Now for d equals one, uh, the system is uh, linear and can be, can be solved in uh, polynomial time using Gaussian elimination. However, the problem is NPR already for uh, quadratic uh, equations, even uh, uh, for uh, the specific field of F2. Now in terms of uh, prior works, uh, standard the standard technique to solve polynomial systems is to find a convenient representation of the ideal generated by the polynomials, usually in the form of a Grobner basis. And, and it, sh it should be said that the complexity analysis of uh, such algorithms is uh, typically heuristic. On the other hand, at uh, SODA 2017, uh, Lokstandov et, uh, et al presented the first uh, worst case algorithms uh, with exponential speed ups over uh, brute force for solving polynomial uh, systems. Now these uh, algorithms were uh, based on the so-called uh, polynomial method in uh, circuit complexity, uh, which is basically a technique for uh, proving uh, circuit lower bounds uh, that has uh, recently uh, been applied in algorithm design. Now in this work, we uh, will be uh, mainly interested in solving polynomial systems over uh, the field F2. So the problem is uh, basically the same, uh, but now we're specializing uh, the field to be F2. And as I already mentioned, the problem is NP hard even for uh, quadratic systems. In fact, assuming the exponential time hypothesis, uh, there is no sub-exponential uh, algorithm for the problem. However, it is still a fundamental problem in uh, computer science, and it's uh, widely studied in uh, cryptography, especially in the domain of uh, multivariate cryptosystems. This uh, slide uh, will summarize the most relevant uh, prior work. In uh, 2010, Abu Yaget Al presented the uh, an optimized exhaustive search algorithm uh, for uh, the problem with very detailed complexity analysis. And the algorithm was shown uh, to run uh, very fast in practice. In the year 2013, uh, Bardet et al. presented uh, an algorithm which is based on a hybrid between exhaustive search and linear algebra. The complexity of the algorithm was at the order of two to the 0.79n and then later, at uh, 2017, uh, Zhu and Vitze presented uh, another variant of uh, the hybrid algorithm. Uh, it had no uh, uh, detailed complexity analysis, but it was shown to run quite fast in, uh, in practice. Now, what uh, about the polynomial method algorithms? So the paper that I already mentioned from 2017 by uh, Lokstano et al., uh, it had a complexity for quadratic systems, for solving quadratic systems of uh, the order of uh, 2 to the 0.87n. And they also ex had an extended analysis for a larger uh, degree. Now this uh, algorithm was uh, improved in 2019 by Bjorkland, uh, Kaskin and Williams to run in, in the time, which is at the order of uh, 2 to the 0 uh, 2 to the 0 0.804n, uh, and again, they had an extension for a larger degree, 
and in 2021, this algorithm was, uh, was uh, further improved. Now in this work, we'll be mainly interested in a concrete complexity of uh, solving F2 uh, equations. And now what, what I mean by concrete is, uh, uh, is non-asymptotic, meaning it, the complexity analysis should have no hidden terms. Now this type of uh, analysis is relevant for uh, choosing parameters for uh, concrete crypto systems. In terms of uh, prior work, so I already mentioned that uh, these uh, two algorithms were shown to run uh, fast in practice. And the algorithm uh, by Bardet et al. Uh, was analyzed by the authors and uh, they estimated that uh, it beats a, a brute force for uh, uh, instances uh, with n uh, at least uh, 200. Now these are quite uh, large in instances, but uh, still they are uh, relevant for uh, cryptography. Now in terms of the polynomial method algorithms, uh, unfortunately the complexity analysis of uh, previous uh, algorithms was uh, entirely asymptotic, but if you uh, look uh, deeper into these algorithms, uh, you will it's not very difficult to see that these, uh, uh, these, that these asymptotic uh, notation hide uh, quite large uh, hidden constants, so it's not really expected that uh, as they are, these algorithms uh, will be relevant for uh, cryptography. The main result of this paper is a concretely efficient polynomial method-based algorithm for solving equations over F2, and the complexity of the algorithm for random equation systems measured in terms of bit operations is n squared times uh, 2 to the 0 0.815n for quadratic systems, and there's also an extension for a larger degree. Unfortunately, there is a obstacle for obtaining a fast practical implementation of the algorithm, which is a high memory complexity, which is roughly uh, 2 to the 0.63n for uh, quadratic equations. Now this algorithm seems to beat uh, previous works in terms of uh, concrete time complexity for uh, many interesting uh, parameter ranges. But as I already mentioned, uh, its uh, downside, downside is that it currently has no uh, fast practical uh, implementation. Here's the complexity for uh, some specific instances. You can see that for quadratic systems, uh, the algorithm uh, beats uh, exhaustive search in terms of uh, time complexity, uh, starting from fairly small values of n, say n equals 80 or smaller. Uh, and perhaps a bit surprisingly, it also beats exhaustive search in terms of uh, time complexity, also for a, a larger degree, say degree equals four, starting from uh, n equals uh, 100 or so. The main uh, application of our uh, algorithm is in cryptanalysis of uh, the picnic uh, signature scheme, uh, which is an alternate third round candidate in the post quantum uh, standardization uh, project uh, currently being uh, run by uh, NIST. And what we show is that some instances of uh, Picnic 3 did not uh, achieve their claimed uh, security level. And you can see this from uh, this table. So the larger instances uh, with the claimed security level of 196 and 255 bits. Um, so our tech is, uh, in terms of time complexity, is, uh, um, is below the claimed security level. Of course, the, the attacks also com consume a very large uh, amount of memory, but the uh, security claims were only formulated in terms of the time complexity. Next, I will uh, give some background. Then uh, I will uh, give an overview of uh, the algorithm. And finally, I will conclude. Let me... Uh, First, define some uh, notation. So I'm going to use capital letters uh, for symbolic variables. 
and the lowercase letters for assignments to these variables. As an example, uh, here's an equation system E with uh, n equals f n equals uh, five variables, uh, m equals uh, three equations, and uh, algebraic degree of d equals two. Okay, so uh, let me uh, now give uh, uh, some background about uh, the polynomial method. Given an equation system E consisting of uh, m uh, polynomials, uh, let's define the polynomial F, which is uh, just a product of m terms, where the i-th term is uh, equal to pi of x plus 1. Now let's assume uh, an assignment x is a solution to E, meaning it uh, zeroes out all of these polynomials, and therefore all the terms uh, of uh, F are going to uh, equal uh, 1, and therefore f of x is equal to 1. And it's also not very difficult to see that the other direction holds as well. And this is why, uh, essentially, we, uh, I'm going to call f the identifying polynomial of E. So it will be kind of useful to analyze uh, this uh, polynomial f. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in general, the degree algebraic degree of the polynomial f can be as high as uh, d times m because it contains uh, m terms. Each one uh, is of uh, degree d. And this, uh, this uh, degree is uh, um, basically can be basically too high to manipulate uh, efficiently. Therefore, uh, what we will uh, do is we will define uh, what is known as a probabilistic polynomial. And we're going to denote the, uh, the, this polynomial by uh, f tilde. So f tilde is, uh, contains uh, L terms for some parameter L, which is smaller than M, where the i term uh, is equal to r i of x plus 1, uh, where each r i of x is basically a random linear combination uh, of the M polynomials of E. Now it's uh, similarly to, uh, to the previous uh, definition, uh, f tilde is the identifying polynomial of uh, this uh, equation system E tilde, which uh, basically consists of the, R, uh, of the polynomials Ri. Now this f tilde has uh, two uh, interesting uh, properties. The first property is that it uh, approximates f in the following sense. So let's assume that f of x equals 1, meaning that uh, x is a solution to the equation system E. And therefore, it zeroes out all these uh, all the polynomials pi of x. And uh, as a result, it also zeroes out all, the, all, the, all of their uh, linear combinations, uh, which uh, means that it is a solution to uh, E tilde as well. And therefore, uh, f tilde of x equals uh, 1. Now, if, if uh, f of x equals 0, this basically means that at least one of these uh, uh, polynomials, uh, its value on x is 1. And uh, because these ri's are uh, linear, random linear combinations of the polynomials uh, of E, it's not very difficult uh, to, to prove that uh, with probability at least uh, 1 minus 2 to the minus L, uh, then uh, this uh, equation system uh, E tilde will uh, um, w at least one of its uh, polynomials will equal one as well. And therefore, this means that F tilde of X equals zero with probability uh, one minus two to the minus L. Okay, so that's the first property that F uh, tilde uh, uh, satisfies. The second property is that uh, its degree is uh, relatively low compared to the degree of f. And this is because it contains L terms. Each one of them is of uh, degree d. And therefore, its degree is at most d times L. And uh, we're going to, to, to choose this L such that uh, the degree of f tilde uh, will be uh, relatively low. So it will be, um, more, uh, it will be more efficient to uh, man manipulate this uh, polynomial. So how do we uh, uh, exploit this F tilde uh, in an efficient algorithm? So 
the way it's done is as follows. We're going to uh, define another parameter, n1, uh, small, which is smaller than n, and we're going to uh, partition the variables according to uh, this parameter. So we have the kind of the most significant most significant variables uh, y1 up to yn minus uh, n1 and the z variables z1 up to uh, zn1. Now the basic uh, algorithm, the basic uh, build, building block that we're going to use is, is the following. Uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to describe it next, but uh, the, the main idea is to uh, compute uh, expressions of the form uh, u of y, uh, where uh, u of y is basically a sum over all z uh, of f tilde uh, applied to y and z. Okay, so this is basically a function of y. And the algorithm, the basic building block, is going to uh, compute um, these expressions for all y, for all possible y's. And it's going to, uh, to do this relatively efficiently, meaning it's going to do this faster than exhaustive search uh, or faster than brute force, uh, which has complexity of 2 to the n. Because uh, you can kind of uh, very easily do this in complexity roughly 2 to the n, just by uh, iterating over each y independently, there are two to the n minus n1 such y's, and for each one of them, you just evaluate uh, f tilde uh, applied to y and z for all possible z, and then you sum the values mod two. So th this basically iterates over the entire space, and it has complexity of two to the n. But we're going to do it to do this uh, more efficiently than that. Now, uh, after defining the basic uh, building block, the main algorithms that uh, use the uh, that are based on the polynomial method, uh, they, they use this uh, building block in order to compute the solutions to the equation system E. Now, uh, I'm going to uh, describe to you how this is done later, but the main uh, intuition here is that uh, if you consider this expression uh, U, uh, U of Y, it basically counts the number of solutions mod two to the equation system E uh, tilde. Uh, when uh, this, this y, uh, these variables are just fixed to y. And this is because um, F tilde is the identifying polynomial of E tilde. And when you sum over all z's mod, mod two, you're basically counting the number of solution mod two uh, to this uh, restricted equation system, and uh, you're essentially uh, counting the parity of solutions to this restricted equation system. So this kind of gives you intuition why uh, this, uh, this expression relates to uh, the solution of the uh, polynomial system. Now here's how we're going to implement this uh, basic building block. We're going to consider uh, this, uh, this u as a polynomial in the symbolic uh, variables y. Now because uh, u is a sum of uh, partial evaluations of f tilde, which is uh, of low degree, uh, then the degree of uh, u is, uh, because it's, it's at most the degree of f tilde, then the degree of u is also relatively low. And we're going to exploit that in, uh, in the algorithm. So here's a sketch of the algorithm. The first step is, uh, uh, is basically going to interpolate the algebraic normal form of u as a function of uh, the symbolic variables y. And the second step, we're going to evaluate uh, the polynomial uh, u on all possible assignments, meaning all possible uh, y's. And for both of these steps, we're actually going to use a fast polynomial interpolation and evaluation uh, algorithm. So let's uh, do a sketch of the complexity analysis. So uh, the first step, uh, um, the, its complexity uh, formula involves two terms. The first term, uh, this term here, essentially accounts for the number of monomials in the symbolic representation of u. And why do we have this, uh, this number of monomials? Well, basically the number of variables, the number of y's is n minus n1, 
this is the number of uh, y variables and uh, um, the term here is basically the degree of u and the uh, number of monomials in u is uh, essentially n minus n1 ch uh, choose the degree of uh, uh, of u uh, approximately and um, the second term here is n uh, is 2 uh, to the power of n1 and this accounts for the fact that in order to evaluate uh, u at any point at any y we have to sum over 2 to the n1 values of z so in order basically in order to interpolate uh, the algebraic normal form of u we have to evaluate uh, this uh, we have to evaluate uh, this expression uh, for this many values of uh, of y and this uh, explains uh, this uh, first uh, the, the complexity of the first step. As for the sec second step, we're evaluating u on all possible y's and there are 2 to the n minus n1 such y's and this uh, explains the complexity of the second step. Now if you select the parameters carefully, uh, you can balance these uh, two steps so that each one of them, uh, its complexity is smaller than uh, 2 to the n, uh, which means that the overall complexity of the algorithm is, uh, is, uh, is faster than 2 to the n, as, uh, as I promised. Now, polynomial method algorithms use uh, such parity computations, use this basic building block in order to output solutions to the equation system E. Now, one of our main contributions in the paper is essentially a simpler and more efficient way of computing solutions to the polynomial systems from such a parity uh, computations. And this is what I'm going to describe next. Now I'm going to give an overview of the algorithm. Remember that we have our equation system E and uh, We'll define the polynomial f uh, and uh, call it the identifying polynomial of E. We've also defined a probabilistic polynomial f tilde, which is the identifying polynomial of the equation system E tilde. Previous algorithms solved E by uh, defining and manipulating many independent probabilistic polynomials that approximate f. And this uh, resulted in a large concrete overhead. A simple observation that uh, we're going to use is that each solution of E also solves E tilde. Because uh, if X zeroes out uh, all the polynomials of E, then it obviously zeroes out all their linear combinations R1 up to RL. And the algorithm is going to use this uh, basically by iterating over all solutions of E tilde and checking if each one solves E. And this, uh, in this way, it is uh, sufficient uh, to find all solutions of E. It remains to uh, describe how to iterate over the solutions of E tilde. We're going to use a variable uh, partition. So for n1 smaller than n, we're going to partition the variables x into two sets, the y's, which are the most significant bits, and the z's, which are the least significant bits. And we're going to set the parameters such that for each value of the y's, there is uh, an expected number of a single uh, value for the z, uh, such that yz is a solution to e tilde. And if you do the calculation, then based on some uh, randomness assumptions, uh, we need to set L to be roughly equal to N1. But I'm not going to use this in the remainder of the presentation. So assume we've set the parameters uh, so that this property holds. Now the algorithm is a basic uh, divide and conquer uh, algorithm. And it works as follows. So for each value of the Y's, the most significant bits, we're going to fill in the, say, single value of uh, z such that yz is a solution to e tilde. I'm going to do this by some uh, parity computations. Now we have a solution to e tilde and we can test it on e. 
And if it uh, satisfies E, then we can output the solution. So it remains to describe how to uh, fill in this value of Z for each Y. Recall that uh, U evaluated on Y counts the parity of solutions to uh, the equation system E tilde restricted uh, to the specific value of Y. Now, in fact, it turns out that if Y prime Z prime is the only solution to E tilde restricted uh, to Y prime, then you can use N1 uh, tweaked parity computations of a very similar type to, to you in order to fill in the N1 uh, bits of Z prime. I'm not going to describe exactly how this is done, uh, and you can look it up in the paper. Okay, so that was a, this is kind of a sketch of the uh, divide and conquer algorithm. And let's uh, try to sketch the complexity analysis. So the complexity of iterating over all y's is uh, 2 to the n minus n1. So if you want to just uh, optimize this complexity, then uh, the step, then you will set n1 to be roughly n, to be um, very close to n. Uh, however, this is not a very good idea, because remember that the parity computation uh, cost n1, n minus n1, choose uh, the degree of u, uh, times 2 to the n1. And if you choose uh, n1 to be close to n, then this uh, term will explode. And in fact, it, uh, if you, uh, if you rem remember the degree of u uh, also depends indirectly on n1 because it depends uh, on the degree of f tilde, uh, which is roughly d times l. And l, again, if you recall, is close to n1. So if we uh, if we set n1 too high, then also the degree of u is going to be relatively high. So the conclusion from this is that uh, uh, we cannot set n1 to be very high, and we need to choose it carefully in order to balance the complexity of iterating over uh, these u's and the parity calculations. Finally, let me uh, conclude the talk. So I sketched a concretely efficient polynomial uh, method algorithm for solving F2 equations. And in the paper, we have additional uh, contributions. Uh, for example, we reduce the memory complexity of a naive implementation of the algorithm by an exponential factor. Uh, unfortunately, it still remains uh, relatively high. Furthermore, we optimize the algorithm for uh, breaking concrete crypto systems such as uh, PICNIC. So there are several open problems that remain. Uh, for example, can the algorithm be further uh, optimized? And in particular, can it be optimized for uh, solving over defined systems in which the number of equations is much uh, larger than the number of variables? Finally, it would be very interesting to uh, have a fast implementation of a variant of the algorithm, maybe a variant which uses time space trade-offs. So that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.